morning, or is it 12.01? It's afternoon. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. So today uh, we came together at the United Nations and stood with Iranian women, Iranian girls, and the Iranian people. Following the death of Masa Amini, tens of thousands of Iranians said, enough is enough. The people have taken to the streets and made their voices heard. They're standing for women, for life, and for freedom. The Iranian government has responded with brutality and with violence. And you have to ask, why would they want to be on a commission that protects women. The government and its security forces have shot and killed civilians, they've tortured and disappeared protesters, they've executed people in custody, and yet they want to be on the CSW. Please. The United States has long stood for gender equality and basic human rights. We had to act. Iranian women have clearly called for us here at the United Nations to remove Iran from the Commission on the Status of Women. It was a sensible request. Iran's membership directly undermines the Commission's work. Its membership was a stain on our credibility. Today we remove that stain. The United States stood with these women. We knew this was the right thing to do. And this vote shows that the United Nations stands with these women. Albania and Australia stand with these women. Canada stands, stands with these women. Guatemala, North Macedonia stand with these women. Liberia stands with these women. Israel stands with these, these women. And the United Kingdom stands with these women. And so many other countries, too. Thank you to every country who joined us in supporting this historic initiative. On Saturday, I visited an extraordinary art exhibition on Roosevelt Island called Eyes on Iran. I decided to go because I could see the exhibit from my window, big and bold, Baraya. And I didn't know what it meant, and I looked it up and found that it was sort of a, a, a protest statement, meaning because of, and Iranian women and protesters have used this word in the streets. And when I went on the, to see the exhibition, I could see in the eye that was embedded in the steps were the names of women and people who had been killed, and it really moved me to tears. During my visit, I learned that they put this striking and moving exhibit across from the UN intentionally so that us diplomats would see it and we would act. Well, I saw, and today we chose action. This is really a great day for the commission and for the UN. We stood up for Masha. We stood up for Nila Farr. We stood up for Elahi, for Serena, for Nika, and for so many others. For all the women and girls of Iran, we stood up for women. We stood up for life. And we stood up for freedom. And for that, we are most proud. So thank you. And with that, I'll take a few questions. And James Mays from Al Jazeera. You say it was a great day for the Commission. You say you came together, yet this wasn't an overwhelming result. There were 24 countries that serve on this Commission that didn't support your resolution. They either voted no or abstained. And secondly, what else is the, UN, is the US going to do to support the women of Iran? Your Israeli colleague says you should stop any consideration at any point of a nuclear deal. Well, look. A yes vote is a yes vote. And the resolution was passed, and very few countries voted no. And even many of those countries who decided to abstain gave statements saying 
they supported this, but for various reasons, they made the decision to abstain, and that abstention didn't count. It is only the yes votes that made a difference. And yes, we have to continue to put pressure on Iran because Iran is continuing to attack women in the streets. Uh, women are still in jail. Uh, and the rest of this uh, United Nations needs to stand up and call on Iran to cease uh, the actions that they're taking. Thank you, Ambassador. A number of countries raised procedural objections to this vote. The Russian Federation called for a legal opinion, which was procedurally defeated. The Pakistani uh, rep uh, delegate raised questions about um, th about the procedural nature, that, that the rules of procedure for ECOSOC do not allow for the removal of a member state in this nature. How do you respond to, to those uh, positions? Look, this was historic, uh, and it was uh, something that we've never done before. But as I've said before, and I'll say it here, this was the right thing to do, and this was the time to do it. And I think we sent a strong message to the Iranian government, and we sent a strong message to Iranian women. And uh, I don't think uh, any of us have any, any um, question uh, that uh, this, was, uh, this was right. It felt right and I think it sends the right message. But is it legally right, Ambassador? It clearly was, because the, uh, uh, a legal opinion was requested, and the legal opinion was that we could do this, uh, and if the Russians wanted to object, they needed to do it 24 hours in advance, and they had 24 hours. We didn't put this on the table yesterday. Uh, they had 24 hours, and what we voted on in the council was not to give them a break. They always look for procedural uh, issues to cause chaos and confuse uh, uh, members. That didn't succeed today. have time for one more. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much. My name is Ephraim Kosaifi from Arab News. Uh, Madam Ambassador, beyond uh, what happened here today, what effect do you think this motion will have on the actual facts on the ground? How do you hope that this would contribute to some sort of a change on the ground? And uh, what's the next step as well? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your reporting on uh, whether this uh, and how this has impacted the situation on the ground. Our sense is the Iranians were uh, uh, unnerved by this. Uh, the fact that they were there and they protested. They clearly, for reasons that are not clear to me, want to be on, on this council. And now they know if they want to be on this council, they have to change their behavior. So we're hoping that what happens now is we will start to see some behavior changes. We did see the decision to disband the moral police. I don't think that's going to change things significantly on the ground, uh, but it shows that uh, they're trying to make uh, some, do something to uh, respond, and I'm hoping that in the end they will hear the uh, ECOSOC Council clearly, and they will stop uh, their unrelenting brutality against uh, protesters in the streets. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations.